Hi everyone. Buenas tardes. Señor Peira. Portuguese is in the dog. Okay. I get the problem of with uh Well, uh, again, hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Efrain. I'll be uh, sharing today our experiences as DI challenges and success within the open source community. Uh, first of all, a little bit about myself. My name is Efrain Marquez Arreaza. I'm a telco operations manager at Red Hat. That's my day job, plus also. Uh, Unidos leadership team. That's the non-paid job. Uh, I'm a born. I was born and raised in Venezuela. Uh, later in 2007, I immigrated to Canada. I lived there for about 14 years, and then two years ago, I took an opportunity to come to the U.S. with Red Hat. Also, while in Canada. In November 2015, when I joined Red Hat in the Toronto office as a, a technical account manager. And, um, and then uh, for the position of telco person manager, uh, open up, it was uh, US based. They said uh, it preferred East Coast, you can choose between Boston and Miami. So I, I picked Rally, right? Halfway there. Uh, so far, enjoying it, uh, the, the Rally area. Also, uh, a little bit about my open source community uh, journey. Uh, also, through not so much as Rochelle in the assembler days. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit younger, so yes. I, I started with, uh, I started with uh, Slackware back in December 96. But I still had, didn't have the punch card, but I had floppy disk. A lot of new kids nowadays don't, you know, the, they think uh, uh, floppy disk are, you know, 3D printers, so, you know, the safe icon, right? So, a lot of nights installing uh, Slackware. After that, in the 96, around 98, 99, uh, I was also a founding member of the Venezuelan Linux user group. And, and get to be, you know, uh, get to get that exposure of open source. And, and promoting open source when back in the late 90s, they already said, you know, open source is, not, is, going, is, not, is going nowhere. Uh, you should stick to something else. And then uh, still, I think it was to summer 2002, I installed Red Hat Linux without the enterprise, 7.3 uh, for a couple of years until Fedora came about. I installed my first Fedora back in 2004, then in 2007. We were on a break until November 2015. I joined Red Hat. I run RHEL on my work laptop, and I run Fedora on my personal home uh, laptop. Well, today's a special day. We're still celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Feliz Mes de la Herencia Hispana. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be closing the, the month with, uh, with this talk in this event, All Things Open. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. And to the acronym, as we were mentioned before, 
they have evolved from, uh, I think, six, seven years ago, we were talking about diversity and inclusion. Then it has evolved to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Nowadays, a lot of people talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And congrats to Drew and Rochelle on that talk. I mean, that's one of the pillars of the DEI communities. At the moment, we're in Red Hat, we're doing DEI, so eventually maybe we'll evolve to DEIB. <laughs> or, yes, DEIB. <laughs> I raised my hand, I would hire you. <laughs> and also, uh, other folks uh, know these communities as uh, ERGs employee resource groups and just recently somebody mentioned that they were calling it a direct organization uh, brg so business resource group so some people think they're all the same you know different different acronyms for the for the same communities other people they um have different thoughts on on, on each one of them now before we that was just the background check on um the point to, the talk today. So before going to the talk, a little background on Red Hat uh, is that uh, this year we are celebrating 30 year anniversary. Uh, back in 1983, uh, it was uh, founded by basically two guys, Bob Young on the business side and Mark Irwin on the technical side. Last, last count in March, uh, we were about 20,000 people uh, globally. And uh, headquarters in Raleigh, so that's why we we have a lot of good a good presence in Raleigh, uh, with uh, 95 offices in 35 countries. So as a global company, uh, we have we're all over the world, uh, and then obviously we speak many languages. So uh, multiculturalism is part of our DNA. Currently at uh, Red Hat, we have nine DEI communities. We have the military veterans, we have BUILD, we have um, diverse abilities, native indigenous, uh, Asian network, women leadership, neurodiversity, and pride, and of course, Unidos. So that's the that story I'm here to share, the Red Hat Unidos story. And we basically uh, were born uh, in, 19, in 2019, uh, based out of Red Hat's uh, Community and Social Responsibility Report in the US, it showed that we were about 4% uh, associates with only 1% uh, of associates in leadership roles. Um, most of the DEI communities in 2019 were uh, self-organized. Uh, uh, and all is volunteer work, so uh, this doesn't, it's not part of your job description, so it's, it's all volunteer work. At uh, that time, uh, we had within the, within the people team, the human resource, there was a, a, DEI, a DEI team, but as, as a role of chief DEI officer, I think, Someone was had the title, but it was not, you know, it was like a team. It was not somebody ex dedicated to that. We now have it. We now have it since 2020, since 2022, but uh, back in 2019, we didn't have it. Yeah. So obviously the, the mission, the UNIDOS mission was to connect and support the Hispanic and, and Latinos, uh, Latin community also to strive to educate and share Hispanic and Latin culture and, and history with, with, with other associates. And obviously, being a welcome DEI community, our first goal was for associates who identify as Hispanic Latinos in the US mainly, as is one of the, of the, of the components of, the, of, of a private profile to identify your identity to your ethnicity. Also, uh, since it's a global company, we have 
uh, presence in Latin, in Latin America, and we have all, many Hispanic Latinos uh, are around the world. I've met, you know, Mexicans working in, in uh, Finland. I've met uh, Venezuelans working in Japan. So it's, 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 it's open to everybody worldwide. In that note, time zone is a big problem. <laughs> and of course, um, one of the frequent, frequent asked questions was, do you have to speak Spanish, Portuguese to join Unidos? And of course, we default to English as a uh, company. But we, if people ask questions in Spanish or Portuguese, we're welcome to do that. So, and of course, our allies, also Fatima, great presentation on the allies. Uh, we welcome them. Uh, yeah. One example is uh, we have uh, an, an associate uh, based in India who, even with a time zone difference, he always joins our events. And it's amazing that he, he and then one time I, I, I follow up with him on chat saying, you know, thank you for, for joining, but you know, what's your interest? Like, well, I'm, 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 I'm Indian, I live in India but I love the Spanish language and I love the Hispanic culture. So I make my, I go at the extra mile to join all those events. Since, so since 2020, uh, we have had a, a challenge and success. Our official kickoff uh, was back in February, 2020. When we were happy and we didn't know it. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting with, with a dance lessons that were, was very interactive, very engaging. And then the next month, <laughs> we were all in lockdown, everybody remote. The pandemic really hit us in the sense that we were not able to do anything in person. Another interesting challenges that came up were, as you, as you saw, one of our main, cons one of our object objectives was to feel people that are welcome, especially Hispanic and Latinos. And one of the big, uh, surprises, at least to me, was that um, we had a lot of Hispanic and Latin uh, associates that didn't feel identified as Hispanic Latinos. Um, the main case was that they were sometimes born in the U.S. and they had parents, grandparents, or other heritage from Latin America, but they didn't feel that connection to the identity because they didn't speak Spanish or Portuguese or they didn't have you know, that connections to, to the culture, food, music, or others. And uh, on that note, also, um, yeah, there was like that debate. So are we Hispanic and Latino, Latina, Latinx, Latin? Um, so after, in the beginning, I think 2020 and 2021, we were going with Latinx, and now uh, we've changed to Latin. So different people, it's hard to pick a word that identifies everybody. So at the end of the day, uh, we also had a chapter of uh, women and Latinas at Red Hat, and they, they still join us in those events. But uh, we are very uh, flexible on that term. And of course, as starting up, we had a very small uh, team of volunteers. So of course, even though they try to delegate all these uh, activities and, and, and events, it was hard to, to it, 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 it became known, or it, it, it turned out to be very challenging to have a, a small team of leadership handling all the, the, the requests. Also during 2020, the first year, um, we were faced with, uh, a lot of the activities were very US centric. So the community as a whole, the company, you know, raised that up in, the, in our year end surveys. So to the, to the point of the success, I mean, we had our first um, Hispanic Heritage Month, which is our main event. During the year, we've had other, other events like cafecitos where we just, you know, hang, talk about different topics. That was more ad hoc, and of course, everything was virtual, so that was uh, a challenge. But during, especially during Hispanic Heritage Month, we aim to you know, do social media recognition publicly, besides the ones that we do internally at Red Hat. Uh, later on in 2021, uh, the pandemic still was an issue. Uh, the leadership still was, you know, you're doing the, all this stuff, besides your job, so it's hard sometimes to have the, the time with to do your job, plus all these volunteer activities, and they have also timelines. 
and, and, and preparations and kudos to Todd, Danny and Jennifer and all the, the volunteers at All Things Open. I know that that's hard. And also we, we, we still struggle and you'll see this as, uh, you know, every time uh, we connect with different associates or reach out to associates that we might think are Hispanic or Latin, they come back saying, I don't identify with, with, with that group. Again, during 2021, uh, the, uh, we continue to do our, caf our cafecitos activities. Uh, our main event is Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, in 2021, then we, we became uh, members of um, NHCC, uh, the National Hispanic Corporate Council, who have um, who is an organization that, that, that brings together other corporates, other companies, other organizations to deal and talk about the, you know, DEI, ERG topics and, and help those, uh, um, you know, plan accordingly to, with other activities and, you know, goals and policies that company wants to do. Um, and then in the community, sorry, I left it before, in the community outreach, then uh, we've been sponsoring uh, Code a Dream, who is an organization who focuses on under underrepresented community members who wants to get into code from a non-career uh, in, in tech, get into the tech industry. They do uh, free courses, and then they have an internship programs that ramp them up into um, um, later become uh, developers, mainly developers or software engineers in the industry. Also in 2021, we did, um, uh, we, we also uh, partnered with uh, the Johnson uh, County Public System. And we've done, they reached out saying, uh, one of one middle school reached out saying that their Hispanic com community had increased. So they, they reached out to us to do a presentation for 90 kids between grade six and eight to show them that there's, you know, possibilities in the tech industry for them. And then later in 2022, uh, again, a recurrent theme is, you know, getting associates uh, involved in, in, the, 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 in, the, in the community. Another interesting in 2020 was uh, ne negative feedback. Uh, we had uh, an anonymous, uh, sorry, uh, anonymous feedback uh, saying that if we need a community can't put as an objective to have a, a C-level executive in Red Hat, then what's the purpose of having a community, <laughs> right? Um, we, we hear this feedback um, as, uh, as, as a feedback in the sense, it, I, would, uh, I would say it's negative because it's out of our reach, out of, out of the scope. It's a valid feedback, but um, it's something that we can't control. But obviously, everybody, I, I think, would wish that we would have more diversity um, in the C-level executive uh, leadership teams. Uh, in 2022, uh, the small uh, volunteer teams, uh, uh, leadership team has grown thanks to the help of our LATAM. I think I missed it from 2021. Then in 2021, sorry, going on back, we did our cafecito, and then in order to leverage that, that we were too US-centric, then we leveraged our presence in Mexico, Colombia, uh, Peru, Chile, Argentina, and Brazil to do cafecitos and show that, you know, with the other associates, what's, what's the experience in those, in those countries. And that was a great success, but um, then with too many activities, virtual activities also became one of the problems is you, you solve one problem and then generate another bug, right? So virtual fatigue was very keen in 2022 and feedback of, you know, setting, you know, wanting different expectations of what the community could deliver was another challenge that uh, we still work on. And then in 2022 also it became apparent that, you know, we always get too many requests of, you know, sponsorship of events or, you know, come talk to other middle schools or other high schools or other events in other parts of the, in, in the United States or LATAM. And we just don't have the bandwidth to attend all those. So part of the 2022, we get a new chief DEI, sorry, Rochelle. Um, and that has 
um, has done fairly well, um, has come up with more, you know, long-term strategies in, in the DEI communities. Also, um, we, we, we were finally able to do in-person events. So we had a, a, a social networking events at Red Hats with other uh, DEI, uh, uh, La Hispanic Latin communities in the area. We have people from Lenovo, NetApp, IBM, in the tower. Also, we participated in the uh, CEP, SHEP, uh, the Society of Hispanic Engin Professional Engineers. And for our Hispanic Heritage Month, we had our Chief C uh, DEI Officer, Sushi, with our uh, CEO as the kickoff event. And then this year, fast forward to this year, um, uh, we can't deny that uh, the workforce production we experienced early this year hit us deeply. We, we had very close associates who were very active in the community, part of that reduction. And it almost felt like even a grief that we even skip a cafecito in June because you know the, the 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 energy level was not there, and so we we still you know struggle with in that thing uh, that's across the industry, in the last couple of years the the reductions, and then budget constraints is always presence and uh, now it's still this year I mentioned last year and this year, uh, part of our community outreach we also partnered with Marvel's Kids Code. And this year it was done actually last weekend, and we managed to sponsor 100 tickets for underrepresented kids and families who would otherwise would not be able to to attend those events. And we continue to grow, you know, with all these challenges and and success, we still try to grow. And of course, this year all things open. Thanks for the opportunity to to be here and share our experience. And hopefully uh, in the panel session, uh, we can you know, follow up with any questions you might have. Uh, yeah, that's the kids uh, code activity that we've done last year and this year. And then of course, 2024, there's a big unknown. We'll for sure have more challenges to face. Uh, we still have a medium size. When I say small, I would say less than 10 people in the team leadership team. Medium, we were about between 10 and 20 people currently. Again, juggling your day job or your paying job with your volunteer hours is, is, is always a challenge. And then for this next year, we are looking forward to partner with the NC State Juntos uh, organization and, and, and work with them. As in conclusion, as I, I showed before, then, um, you know, we are, or most organizations, most companies are very data driven. So. Compared to the 20, 2019 and 2023, the latest stats, it's that we've grown in, in associates and leadership, which is also always good. And then from even, I can't speak for the whole community, but at least from my experience, I can say that back in 2019, I was four years into with Red Hats. I only knew three Hispanic Latin that I was mainly working with. Uh, I knew zero Venezuelans at Red Hat. <laughs> And I had zero hours of volunteer work. So nowadays, uh, four years, fast forward to four years later, I've met over 20, 100, oh, 200, 200, <laughs> 200, 200 is one of the company. Uh, 200 uh, Hispanic Latinos all over the world, different departments, you know, HR, um, marketing, I think, except legal. No, I know people at legal, but I don't talk to them too much. Um, Engineering support, customer success. Uh, it, it's amazing hearing different stories from different backgrounds, different perspectives is, is all is always enriching, enriching. And I've managed to find find uh, fifty about fifty Venezuelans at Red Hat again all over the U.S., uh, Chile, Mexico, Spain, in one in Japan. And I haven't done the I haven't done the math, but uh, I know. It must be at least, if I do the, the, the math, it would be about 600 hours of volunteer work that I do happily, you know, without pay. <laughs> and that's all for myself. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Obrigado. Thank you.